In the first part of this series, I discussed how multiple people can use Git to collaborate through a remote repository using branching and merging. In this video, I'm going to use Flying Logic to show you another option you have when it comes time to bring your work together with the work of others, rebasing. This story opens with a repository, or repo, already created. Commit A represents the current state of all the project's files, and exists in three places, my computer, Luna's computer, and in a remote repo somewhere out in the cloud, like GitHub. The head pointers on our computer point through the branch to the commit we currently have checked out. Luna and I are working separately but collaboratively. As we add, change, or remove files, we create new snapshots of the project state, called commits. Remember that each commit only keeps track of the differences from its parent commits, so each commit uses space efficiently and is typically quite small. Now, I've created commits B and C, and Luna has created commits D and E. Now it's time to bring our work together. Let's say I decide to push my work up to GitHub first. This also updates the remote repo's master branch to point to the most recent commit. On a collaborative project, new people can start making contributions at any time. So let's add a third contributor, Shay, who now clones the remote repo to her own computer. She gets her own master branch and head pointer. Shay gets to work and adds a couple commits of her own, F and G. Now, Luna wants to make her work available to the team, so she performs a pull. As I described in the previous video, a pull involves two steps, fetch and merge. When this is complete, Luna has a new commit on her computer that is the result of combining her latest commit with the latest commit on the remote. Luna can then push her work up to the remote so that it can be used by the team. This includes her commits D and E and her merge commit H. This also updates the remote's master branch to point to the most recent commit, the merge. Now, here is where it gets interesting. When Shay cloned the remote repo, the remote's master branch was pointing at commit C, and so far all her work has been based on that commit. Now she's ready to share her work with the team. She could just do another pull, which would create a new merge commit. But if she had joined the team a bit later, she could have based her work on the current remote master branch, which points to commit H. That would have been nice, and would have looked like this. Ah, but we can't simply rewrite history, can we? Shay's commit F only contains differences from commit C, so you can't just switch the parent of a commit. They are bound together forever. So let's undo those changes. Well, it turns out that in some cases we can rewrite history. Since Shay hasn't shared her work with the team yet, nobody else is counting on her commits to remain the same. Git offers a clever operation called rebase that effectively does what I just described. It does this by creating new commits that look just like her old commits, but based off of a more recent commit, in this case H. It is said that Shay is rebasing her commits onto master. Let's see what this looks like. When told to rebase, first Git finds the common ancestor of the two branches. In this case, that's commit C. Then Git creates a temporary set of patches that just record the differences needed to get from C to the tip of Shay's current branch. We'll call these patches C to F and F to G. Next, Git moves Shay's master branch to point at the new base, which is commit H. Next, Git replays the patches onto a new series of commits starting at the new base. The first new commit applies the C to F patch onto the new base, commit H. We'll call this new commit 
f prime. The second new commit applies the f to g patch onto f prime. We'll call this commit g prime. Finally, git deletes the temporary patches. The new f prime and g prime patches are now at the tip of Shay's master branch, and this leaves the old f and g patches not pointed to by any branch. These commits are still in Shay's local copy of the repository, but they no longer show up in the commit history of her master branch. f and g are now known as detached commits. Now, when Shay pushes her work up to the remote repository, only her current live commits are pushed, and to her teammates it looks like her commits were always based on commit h. Eventually, Git running on Shay's computer may get around to reclaiming the storage taken up by the detached commits. This is known as pruning. As you can see, when Luna did her merge earlier, it left a series of parallel changes in the repo, while Shay's changes left a single linear history. Whether you use merging or rebasing to share your changes depends on a number of factors, including the policies of your team and whether or not you've already shared those changes with your team, after which you should never rebase. Rebasing is a powerful tool to keep your project's history clean and useful.